Welcome back. Jim White on TalkSport with Bob Mills and uh, Mickey Gray. Ellis Short has gone, and there was a lot of jubilation amongst uh, various sections of the Sunderland support when that news came through. And the new man in charge has been up, and he's been getting on with the job. He is Stuart Donald, who, of course, uh, until recently was the chairman and owner of Eastleigh Football Club. And now Stuart is uh, putting all his energy and all his attention into Sunderland because Sunderland have dropped from Premier League to Championship to League One. And it absolutely breaks Mickey Gray's heart. Mickey's sitting beside me right here and now. Did, Mickey, did you say or did you not say very briefly that you questioned whether or not Stuart Donald had the finance to go in and get Sunderland? Of course I did, because the reason behind that was because uh, we've just been down in the doldrums for, let's say, the last five or six years without a shadow of a doubt. You know, relegations from Premier League, fighting relegation, and then another relegation to Championship. So I want, like every other Sunderland supporter wants, is the right man to take our club forward again. Stuart Donald, are you the right man? Good morning. Uh, we'll find out. I hope so. Morning, guys. Morning, Stuart. Morning, Stuart. How, how do you feel about it? Um, at the moment, Mick, Mickey is saying the jury is still slightly out, a bit more in than out at the moment, but are, can you prove to us all well, that, that you are the right man to take this great club forward? Well, the only thing that's going to prove that is timing it and making good on your, on, on your promises and your words. So, um, no, no one can say whether I'm going to be good or bad at the moment. Um, everybody can talk about it, and you know, um, uh, <laughs> and the only thing that's going to prove it is time. And some people will be hopeful, and well, I expect everybody will be hopeful. But um, you know, the, the only thing that's going to prove whether I'm the right person for Sunderland um, is in two or three years' time. When we look back at it and see if I've done what I hope I can do. I tell you what, Stuart, Mickey's going to come in in a second. You, you haven't hung about. You, uh, am I right in thinking you made Martin Bain's position of chief executive redundant just yesterday? Yes, that, 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 that's correct. Yeah, um, and, and and to be fair, I know that there was a lot of you know conversation about Martin within the Sunderland fan base and indeed Ellis. But my, all, all I can say is how I my experience of them, and they've both been unbelievably helpful um, in in getting the deal done. Um, and for the first moment, I sort of spoke to both of them. They've been extremely professional. So, um, you know, but in the situation that we're in, I'm quite hands-on um, and we expect to be hands-on. So I think that, that, that sort of means that Martin doesn't, you, you know, won't be able to, if you like, justify his role, really. So we had a chat and he was he was fully understanding. Mm. Uh, Stuart, I mean, it's been a long process for you, obviously, um, until you've signed the papers and, and now you're in charge. I bet you can't really wait now to get your teeth into it, but you've got a lot of stuff uh, to get your teeth into, i.e. The, 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 the playing side, the financial side, where the club's going to go, what direction, I suppose. Uh, there's an awful lot to do, yeah, but it's unbelievably exciting. Um, I barely slept. I mean, the, the whole process for me was pretty quick because we came into the deal sort of last minute. So it's, it, the legals were frantic, to be fair. Mm. Um, but we got two or three months work done in, in literally about two weeks. And then, you know, it was announced before ideally I'd have liked. Um, but, you know, Ellis wanted to do that and it's his football club. So, you know, um, that, at that stage, that was fine. What happened, so, Stuart? Can you share that with us? Did Short call you up out of the blue? No, um, Charlie, obviously the, the, the other director and, and owner, um, he knew Ellis and, and we'd, we'd known that Sunderland was on the market for a while um, and he went up to see Ellis um, as, as the people that were supposedly ahead of us in the deal. Um, Ellis, I think, for one reason or another, felt that, he, you know, that, that wasn't what he wanted to do um, and we felt that that left the door open for us. So we then said, look, you know, we talked to you before, but we're... We're serious about doing this if, if you're not sort of interested in the others. So Charlie put that together, um, and literally it just flew then in about a two-week period. He said, look, you've got, you got two weeks because, you know, I do want to let some of them go, um, and I'll go to the best option, but I'll give you a couple of weeks to, you know, to actually sort of um, do your due diligence. Right, right, right. It. So, so, so he's written off the debt? He's written off all the debt, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, that well, that's a good place to start from, isn't it? Obviously, Stuart. Right. 
But Mickey, what would your what would your main concern be today? Yeah, I'm sitting beside the Sunderland legend, sure. You know that, of course. And Mickey Gray, yeah. the, the fans love Mickey, but you have a genuine concern now that Stuart and his boys get it right. No, what I, would your big concern be? Well, the, I mean, the concern is obviously getting people back in the stadium, bums on seats, and I'm sure that uh, Stuart himself knows that. Uh, what direction the club's going in, Stuart? Stuart, I just mentioned, I think you just said there, you know, the next two or three years. Is it paramount that the club get promoted from League One in the first year? Well, I don't think it's paramount, but I mean, um, we, we, we've got to have a show where we're, we would expect to be at the, at the top of the league. I think every Sunderland fan um, and myself um, will expect to be in and around the top of that league. Um, you'd hope to go up. I think the very worst you'd expect is, is, is the playoffs. Um, there's a lot to do on the playing side, obviously, as everybody knows. Mm. Um, so it's, it's, it's a transitional period. But even so, with the attraction that is Sunderland in League One, the finances that the, the, the team will have, um, if the money's spent right, we've got the right man in place, etc., etc., um, you would expect on any normal season for Sunderland to win the league, wouldn't you? So yeah. um, that's what we'll be driving for. But you could finish Sirs and, and, and lose at Wembley, couldn't you? Which mm. wouldn't be great. Um, it's happened before. Then we, we just have to go again. But, it, but it's a sport, isn't it? So there's, there's no guarantee. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's two things for me, Stuart. Obviously, I think everybody's really itching to find out what the, who the new manager's going to be. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sure that, you know, you're not going to... It would be great if you give us an exclusive now, but I'm not sure that's going to happen. And the other thing is, and I think you've just answered that question, is are there going to be funds available? Well, there'll be funds available. On the manager front, we've agreed literally this morning. Um, so we are we are just drawing up contracts with the man that we want. So I'm expecting there to be news on that very soon. Um, come on, come on, come on, Stuart. L listen, <laughs> Sunderland fans are listening in the, the thousands at the moment. I'm looking at Twitter. Tell, tell us who it is. Are you bringing back Coleman? Um, uh, no. Um, no, it's, it's, it's not. It's not Chris. Um, and I, but I can't. I can't say who it is. Of until, course you and, can. Until the until that ink's dry. Um, although oh it's come on! Um, <laughs> yeah, but is it going to get the supporters excited, Stuart? That's what I think. I'd like to know. Oh, I think so. Well, it's got me really excited. Uh -huh. I'm absolutely jumping up and down this morning. Is he so. English or is he a foreigner? Uh, he, he's a human being. Um, <laughs> Was he born in Hinckley? <laughs> Eastley fans haven't got a worry that Richard Hill's on his way out, have they? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Um, uh, he, I don't think he was born in Hinckley. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty <laughs> oh, sure he's no, born sure. Have you, have you agreed, you've um, agreed terms? We've agreed terms, and literally the, the contracts are with the lawyers. So um, there's a, there's a, a, the, the man in question is absolutely thrilled, um, which is what we want. Um, and I'm absolutely delighted that, that he's coming. So um, that's exciting for us. Come on, Stuart. Uh, I challenge you to he's, do it. So it he's man. your he's man. Come on, flex your muscle as a new owner. Tell us who it is. <laughs> Jim, very tempting, but I can't. Um, but I'm hoping that by the end of the day, um, we, we can reveal that. So, you know, there's a lot to do, and, we, and we've got to move quickly, um, and we've got to get ourselves organised. It's a big job, but that manager will have, without doubt, you know, the, the, the biggest budget in the league. The mm. issue, of course, is the existing squad um, yeah. and their desire to stay. And then, of course, if some of them don't want to stay, making sure that, um, you know, if they don't stay, is they leave on the right basis. Um, and we have to be in control of that, not the players. And, of course, we've got to talk to the players because you know what it's like. You know, agents here potentially see an opportunity to to make a fee and, and, and get their players right. leaving. So, of course, you know, they're all telling us the players want to leave. But the reality of it is we've got to check with the players that's actually what they want. Mm. And if they do, they understand. But, of course, if we keep some of those players, um, they should be the best players in their positions in the league. So, yeah. just because they're saying they want to leave, they might just have to talk to us and accept that's not the case. Stuart, Call Callum on Twitter is saying, Jim, please get in. Ask Stuart what's going on with Jack Rodwell. What's going on with him? Um, well, Jack, Jack Rodwell obviously is going to need a conversation. I've seen everything that's been said. Um, but Jack Rodwell, just like every other player, needs to have a conversation with us about their desire to be at the football club. 
Um, and Jack's no different to, to lots of them now with what they're saying. Um, but we need to hear exactly what it is from the horse's mouth. And, and you know, <laughs> we're not stupid. Anybody that doesn't want to be at the club, and I'm not saying that, that, that Jack's saying that, but anybody that doesn't want to be at the club or doesn't want to play for the shouldn't club... Shouldn't be at the club. Yes. Shouldn't be at the club. Yes. But that yes. doesn't mean we should pay them to go and play for someone else. Absolutely. No, so then, no. Uh, Stuart, yeah. I can tell you, I'm looking at the TalkSport Twitter feed and you are getting enormous, enormous backing from the Sunderland fans who are, who are coming on to it. And they're all saying, and you know what I'm about to say, Stuart, get them to tell us who it is. Well, uh, Jack, Jack's already <laughs> sussed it out there on Twitter. I can't believe Pep's leaving City to come to the <laughs> <laughs> Stuart, is it um, Mick McCarthy? Uh, no. Um, and, that, and that's the... Le- um, the, the the other things, um, you know, I, I suppose that the Sunderland fans, you know, there, there's been a lot of chat in the last few days. So I think that they're, they're starting to get a feel of, of, of what we're going to try and do. It is a big job. And, and Mickey and, and lots of other people mm. um, are going to be concerned because of where the football club's been. Lots of people have said to me, why buy it? Well, when do you get a chance to buy Sunderland Football Club? Um, and yes, it, it, it might be uh, in a little bit of a mess, but that, that, that what's going to fix that is hard work. Mm. Um, and if you get it right, what a football club you've got. But, um, but Stuart, so, as, as Mickey will no doubt verify, you, you cannot get it wrong, can you? This is Sunderland. This is one of the proudest clubs in England. And you know the responsibility that comes yeah. with the position that you've now assumed. Well, I can't get it wrong because I've got, I've got my name above the door and I've put my name to it, haven't I? So if I get it wrong, I'm going to look like a right turnip. <laughs> um, so, so, you know, my, my reputation is on the line here. I could have stayed below the radar um, and not got involved. But it just looks such a wonderful challenge. And you can see, um, it, even in that game where I went to Wolves, the people are just crying out to feel connected with their football club, feel involved, um, and actually just have a team that they feel doesn't take the mickey out of them and actually understands their values. And, mm. and that's what we got to build. And, and Stuart, I mean, yourself and Charlie, obviously, um, moving forward, um, you know, you, you've said yourself, if this club does get the potential and get back and get itself back into the championship, there's going to be more funds needed. I yeah. there, there was a, there was a speculation about Repsol maybe involved in it, who obviously are absolutely huge company. Is that yeah, the direction yeah. that we need to be going in when we get potentially to the championship and I to the top half of that table? Well, dep- depending on what the finances look like, obviously the key here is to try and keep as much of the, you know, the, the, the club's revenue that's going to be generated from the parachute payments as possible, so that it gives us a bit of war test if we can get back up in the championship. And that's um, for the next two years, isn't it? Forty million a year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then, yeah so that there's two years left, but obviously it diminishes. But the but what we need to do is we need to we need to run the football club correctly. Not have people take the mickey out of us, so we're not wasting money and getting no value. Are you know paying players off or yes, not getting free yeah, transfer yeah. etc. We've got to get that right, and if we get that right, that will help us with our war chest. But I, I, <laughs> the day the deal got announced, I got offered twenty two million pounds more than what I paid for it to sell it, mm. and I hadn't even had it. Mm. Um, and, and it's they're, <laughs> you they're, you got offered a, twenty plus million to, to sell it on the yeah. day you got it. Yeah, well, he was actually 17 because I got the figures wrong. But, uh, you know, he said, I'll give you 22 million more. But I've got no interest in that. Um, what, what, what I have got, uh, you know, when we're talking about where, where do we take the football club, uh, there are lots of people in the business world that, that I know that have expressed an interest. And there is one person who um, is a very good friend of mine that I would be very interested in who is, is very well connected. And as soon as I did the deal... He said, you know, Stu, Stu can, I, can I get involved? Um, and I'm going to pop over and see him this weekend in Monaco because um, the Grand Prix is on. So I thought it's been pretty hard work. I'm going to have a couple of days off and then we're going to sit down uh, and I'll see if he wants to, you know, dot the I's and cross the T's. I've, I've told him about the deal. He's, he's good in football. Um, he's good in business. And um, I think I might get him involved and he wants to be involved. But that will be a minority stake. But... He's the sort of um, he's the sort of guy that if you're talking about, can, you know, can, if if I can't do it, could he help me do it? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and Stuart, uh, quick <sighs> one for me. No, I'll say it, Stuart. I mean, look, there's been so many mistakes over the last five or six years. You you, you can't say that because you've just bought the uh, you've just bought the company of the football club from them. 
you can't afford to make one mistake, Stuart. I think you know that. Um, well, I, I can make a small mistake in the tea room or the, uh, but no, not. No, I, I can't get it wrong on the pitch. Yeah. Um, and and I and, and I've got to get the manager right, and I've got to deal with the existing squad right, and we've got to get our recruitment right. And this is why um, you, this is why you're going to be hands on. Yeah. Um, I've got to make sure that what what might have happened from afar. Um, and, I, and I don't think I'm talking out of turn here because Ellis would probably say this is he, he was an absentee sort of billionaire owner. And what tends to happen there is regardless of how much money you've got, it just sometimes creates the wrong culture within within the club. Exactly. People don't really sort of treat the money like it's their own, whether you pay, you know, and I saw this in um, one of the lads that was signed in Dong. I saw the newspaper article about when the club signed him for a record fee. And it basically said the existing club couldn't believe how much money they got for him. Mm. Well, if that was my money, I'd be having a word with the person that did the negotiation. Mm. Yes. Because I wouldn't, yeah. you, you wouldn't want, um, <laughs> you wouldn't want the selling club actually implying publicly that you, they think you've overpaid. Mm. And no. we can't have that. But I think that's probably the culture that the football club has had. But, but sure, it, it, money. it does sound to me that you are the sort of guy who can form a bond with the fans, and that's where Short came up short. Um, well, I'll we'll probably start from a different place, because, uh, you know, I used to go and watch football like all the Sunderland fans will have done from a very young age. So mm. that was my experience of football, and, and I just loved it. And I feel that football's moved away from that for a lot of the the clubs, a lot of the big clubs, because it's 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 far more corporate now, and and, and it's all about TV so, revenues, etc. But it doesn't have to be like that. It should be, it should be the way that it needs to be, which is the club is the fans, isn't it? Absolutely. So without the fans, you haven't got a club. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I can, I cannot tell. Niall Jones, who's a big Sunderland fan, he tells us. Jim, I've just woken up early morning here in Mexico. I'm listening to this. Stuart Donald's got to tell us who the... Right, Stuart, let, let's finish with this. Right, here's a challenge. Okay, live on TalkSport. I mean, millions listening to you right now. I think the... Bob will, Bob will have a go. Mickey will have a go and I'll have a go. If one of us gets it right, will you give it the thumbs up and agree? Um, no. Come on, Stuart. Um, You've got to do it. Down. Sorry? You might, be able to you might be able to tell from my reaction. Go on, then. <laughs> Are you about to give Frank Lampard his first job in management? Uh, no. Well, it's not Chris Wilder, so I'm just going to throw one out there. Um, it's not Gary Rowett. It's and not I, and I think Emery. he's probably got the potential to be a manager. He's probably Sorry? got. <laughs> he's probably got the potential to be a manager at, at Sunderland Football Club. Neil Lennon, I'm going to say. Uh, nope. Bob, Bob Mills. Throw one, Bob. Go, I give on, the Bob. same answer I give to every quiz we ever have on this show. Oh, Kevin, Kevin Phillips. Kevin Phillips? <laughs> no. No, it's not Kevin. No, no. Right, a lot of people. Effort, a lot of people are suggesting it's Alan Pardew. Here we go. We keep going. Um, we, we, we'll, we'll be on for about three hours of this. Right? No, it's not him either. But um, Stuart, I, 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 tell I, us. I promise you, it will not be long. Um, You'll text me when are, you can. I will text you, and I'll I'll let you know straight away. What? I think the ink must be dry now, Stuart. Not quite. There's quite a lot of detail <laughs> in these contracts, you know. Um, and that's what I mean. You agreed, and then, uh, okay. then uh, something gets slid in, doesn't it? What, what length of contract have you given them? Uh, oh, a couple of years with, a, with an extension based on performance. Stuart, this, is, this has been incredible. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Stuart, what can I say? Um Listen, we want to get a good relationship going with you here at TalkSport. Sure. I'm pretty darn sure we already have done that. And uh, I'm quite sure Mr. Gray to my right here can, yeah. can work very closely with you sure. because he knows the club inside out. Sure. Well, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, Mick is like everybody else, uh, I'm sure, when it comes to Sunderland, who's a Sunderland fan. They, they want hope. Um, they want to believe. But at the end of the day, you can say absolutely anything. It's what you're doing. And at the moment, I'm only two days in. Like I can say, I'm working really hard and will continue to do that to try and get it right. I'm sure we won't get everything right, but fundamentally, the club has got enough funds to give itself a go to get back up in the Premier League. But first of all, we've got to get in the Championship. So we're focused on that. Okay. Um, and then people can judge how we do. Has a new manager managed Sunderland before? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> go on, sure. No. No. 
All right. Okay. How much right. you? How much you paying? How much is Wenger costing then? <laughs> oh. Sure. You have been magnificent, my friend. Uh, and this is just day one with us. Uh, terrific. Mickey is nodding here, giving you the thumbs up. And uh, Good stuff. we, we, oh, well, we we'll think. Let's see if I can deliver. Oh, mate, you've I wish well. you all the best, Stuart. Well I hope sure. it all works out for you. Sure and Donald. text Jim what the manager's name is, please. Will do. No worries. Good Stuart, man. I appreciate Good you doing that. Thank yeah, you. No, thanks for having me on. See you, guys. Thank well, you. Stuart Donald, the new Sunderland owner. Wow. I'd be a rotten interrogator in the war. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get it out of him. You tried. Stay with us.